In this video, we're going to go over pacing and time management on the MCAT car section. This is a major issue for many students and one that you'll probably have to figure out in order to attain your target score. So first, the MCAT car section is 90 minutes long. There are nine passages and a total of 53 questions. The nice thing about this is that the math works out pretty well, that technically with nine passages in 90 minutes, you have 10 minutes to complete each passage. However, it turns out that this is not so simple. Many students find that they take more than 10 minutes per passage and their accuracy suffers if they try to rush to get through the passages. All right, now the first thing I want to mention is that pacing and time management is important, but accuracy comes first. There are students that come to me all the time and they say that my car score is low and the reason why it's low is because I can't get to all the passages. I just can't complete all the passages on time. The first thing that I want to check with these students is to make sure that accuracy is not an issue. The way you do this is, first, you want to watch the video we discussed on cars accuracy and target scores. Figure out how many questions can you afford to get wrong in order to attain the score you're aiming for. So again, the example we went through is, if you're aiming for a 125, you need to get about 38 to 39 questions right. So that means you can get 14 to 15 questions wrong. Let's do an exercise where instead of doing an entire car section, just do three passages. For these three passages, I want you to do them on timed. So give yourself unlimited time on these three passages. So no time constraints. If you need, you can give yourself 20 minutes, even 30 minutes per passage, right? Really give you as much time as you need so that way you don't have to say that time is an issue. With these three passages, after you complete them, check your accuracy. In this case, if you wanna get a 125, three passages is a third of a section. So if you can miss about 14 to 15 questions in total, that means to get a 125, you should be missing about five questions for those three passages. If you complete three passages and you're missing five or fewer questions, then great, accuracy is not a concern for you. And we can talk about pacing and time management. However, if you give yourselves unlimited time for three passages and you're missing more than five questions, if you're missing 68 questions or more, then Pacing and time management is not something you should be worrying about at this point. The first thing you need to worry about is accuracy. How can you raise your accuracy? Because in this case, it doesn't matter if you finish all the passages, your accuracy is so low that you won't be able to get your target score. So accuracy comes first. Once you get your accuracy to the level that you need, then we can talk about pacing and time management. Now, one challenge of accuracy and pacing is that usually if you have more time, your accuracy is higher. So when you apply the time pressures of the MCAT car section, you can find that your score will drop if you have to get through each passage in a set amount of time. And here, again, you need to have a balance. And one thing that a lot of students have to consider is if they need to complete all nine passages to get their target scores. And a good explanation for this is, if you have a student who has a high accuracy when they complete only eight passages and guess out on the nine passage, that might be better than if they try to do all nine passages, but because they're rushing, they have a low accuracy on all nine passages. All right, so that's a situation where the student can actually get a higher score by only completing eight of the nine passages. So this is something you can think about because if you've tried this and you found that when you do fewer passages, your accuracy is higher, then do a little bit of math. That last passage that you don't do, it doesn't mean that you're going to completely skip. It doesn't mean you're gonna miss all the questions for that passage. You can pick a random answer choice for all the questions in that passage, and at least you're gonna get 25% of those questions right. And that's just standard based on general luck. So, if you use that approach, you might be able to still get the target score you're looking for by completing only eight of the nine passages. There's actually a huge benefit to this, and that is 
you can be very strategic with a passage that you choose to skip, right? If there's nine passages and you're gonna need going to complete eight of them, you can pick the eight passages you want to do and you can skip that one passage that you just start reading and doesn't make sense and you don't wanna do that passage, right? For many students, this is gonna be philosophy and art theory passages. These are usually the hardest passages on the exam because they're very abstract and they're hard to understand. These are many passages where students read the first paragraph and after reading it, they have no idea what they just read. So if you're only gonna do eight passages, then great, you can skip one of these passages. And these passages, for a lot of students, they're gonna miss a lot of questions. So it's pretty similar to just skipping the passage. For other students, it's not that much harder. They can get the same accuracy in these passages, but it might take longer because of the time it takes for you to read the passage and go through all of the questions. Okay, so that's something to consider as well, but obviously this isn't gonna work for everyone. So for students that are aiming for a high CAR score, it doesn't make sense at all to skip any passages because to get a high CAR score, you need to complete all nine passages. But this is just for all students to think about. And that's because not all students are gonna be aiming for a high score. So some students that are aiming for decent scores could potentially get away with completing only eight of nine passages. So next, once you have figured out how many passages that you need to do, you have the accuracy that you need, but you still can't pull it off in a full length car section. The next thing you need to figure out is what is causing the pacing issue? So one of them could be time management issues. This is extremely common for a lot of students. And this is a skill that you need to develop by doing a car section at a time. So there's a lot of students who do one car's passage at a time. But really, if you do one car's passage at a time, sure, you might be able to practice some car skills, but you're not learning how to pace yourself. So when you're doing cars passages, I highly recommend that you do several passages at a time. You don't have to do nine passages because that's a lot to do on a regular basis, but at least if you do several passages at a time, you can at least learn to pace yourself between passages. The common issues that students have is just one passage taking way more time than it should. So you can have several passages that maybe take 10, 11 minutes, and then one passage that takes 18 minutes, right? And then the student has to rush, they have five minutes to do a couple passages. So those are situations that we don't want to deal with. So one way to help with time management is to set checkpoints throughout the section. Checkpoints is basically for you to know when I have finished X number passage, I should have about this much amount of time left. If I have less time than that, that means I'm already falling behind and I have to pick up my pace, right? So a very simple example would just to say, after passage three, I should have 60 minutes left. After passage six, I should have 30 minutes left. If you follow a simple checkpoint system like this, it'll certainly help prevent you from getting to a situation where you have five minutes left to do two passages. You might still have some pacing issues, but they won't be as severe. Another common issue is reading too slowly. This can be very difficult for a lot of students who have a very strong science background because the way that you're supposed to read for the MCAT card section is very different from the way that you're used to reading scientific textbooks. Scientific textbooks you're used to reading for the scientific facts, looking at all the details, but that's not what you want to do for the MCAT card section. For the MCAT card section, you really want to be able to recognize the claims of each paragraph and the main argument of the entire passage. So there are some things that I can do to deal with reading too slowly. The first thing might just be to change the way you read the passage. Instead of focusing on the details, just do you understand the gist of each paragraph? Another thing that I can potentially do that some students have tried is to use speed reading software. So a common issue for many students is that when they read, they tend to verbalize the words as they read. So essentially, as they read, they're making the, essentially just reading aloud with their mouth. And in this case, then your reading speed is 
limited by how fast your mouth can move, which is just not that fast. So some of these speed reading softwares can teach you to read with just your eyes. And if you read with just your eyes, you can read faster than your mouth can move. Finally, another issue could be spending too much time rereading the passage. This actually can go uh, in both directions, but only one of them is more of a pacing issue. So this is when students are doing MCAT CARS questions. There are some questions that you should go back to the passage to, to find information to answer, and there are other questions where you should not be going back to the passage to answer. The ones you should be going back for, those are referencing a specific word or paragraph or phrase or quote in the passage. In those cases, you want to go back to the passage because the MCAT will try to trick you if you don't go back by twisting words and uh, testing your memory. However, there are also questions that don't reference anything specific in the passage. A very common example are main idea or general purpose questions. What is the main idea of this passage? What is the general purpose of this passage? For these questions, you're not gonna find the answer in any individual paragraph. So if you try to go back to the passage to find the answer, you'll start reading one paragraph and then another paragraph and you're not gonna find the answer, so you're gonna keep reading and you're gonna find yourself rereading the entire passage. And now you have the answer and that's because you just reread the entire passage. So there are some questions on the exam that you should not be going back to the passage for. These are questions where you should be going with your gut. What was the main idea of the passage that you got from reading the passage the first time? So if you can learn to do this and be strategic with which questions you should and should not go back to the passage for, that can also help with pacing and time management. Okay, so to recap, pacing and time management is a major issue for a lot of students, but before you consider how to deal with your pacing and time management issues, consider first if your accuracy is at the level that you need to reach your target score, consider if you need to complete all nine passages to get your target score, and if you pass those two steps, then you can focus on what is the specific issue that's causing you to run out of time and come up with an effective solution. Thank <laughs> you.